You are watching Travel World Online. No country in the world of equivalent size or aviation market taxes fuel at India's rates. Delhi government issued orders allowing cinemas, theatres, multiplexes to reopen. Kakatiya Rudreshwar Ramp Temple included in World Heritage Site List. Our mission is to rejuvenate Tafi, Ajay Prakash. Namaskar, Sat Swagal. Welcome to today's episode of Travel World. Today is the first time of the new team of the President Tiyanadi Puri team. Congratulations and welcome Ajay. Now, Dilip, whenever you win, it comes with a responsibility. You've got a lot of challenges. Thank you, Anil. Uh, and uh, a big thank you to our uh, members who've uh, reposed this overwhelming confidence and trust in our team. We are very gratified that the entire team has been elected. Let, before we start, let me just introduce uh, our team. Starting uh, with uh, on the screen uh, on the top uh, right is Mr. Anil Kalsi from uh, New Delhi. Oh. Then uh, the second row uh, uh, on the left is Mr. Lalit Jain from Tamil Nadu. Uh, on the right is uh, Mr. Kamal Ramchand from uh, Mumbai, who is our vice president. Uh, then we have Mr. Uh, Abbas Moyes from Mumbai, who is our National General Secretary. Then we have Mr. Hitang Shah from Gujarat, who is our Treasurer. And we have two of our uh, remaining committee members. One is Mr. Sirat Sabarwal from uh, Bangalore and Ms. Rani Bachani from uh, Cochin. The one person who could not join us is Mr. Rai Achal Krishna from uh, Delhi NCR uh, because he had a personal uh, uh, thing to attend to. So having done the introductions, yes, Anil, you're absolutely right. Uh, it is a huge responsibility and uh, we intend to take it as such. Because, of course, we've all seen the devastation that the uh, pandemic has caused. Uh, each one of us has suffered, not only in terms of business, but also in terms of friends, relatives, dear ones that we have seen pass away. It's been, it's been an unprecedented and a very, very troubling time. And of course, the industry has been one of the worst hit. The road to recovery is going to be slow, is going to be hard, and there are going to be many falls, pitfalls and setbacks on the way. But as an association, the first thing we need to do is to reach out to our members, to engage with them in a more meaningful way, in a way that tells them that Taffy is there for each and every member, big or small, that we will not leave them to face their problems alone. Given this, we will start a very, very open and a very consistent dialogue with our members so that they feel a sense of belonging, so that they feel a sense of ownership, so that they feel that they can influence and determine how Taffy will behave and react in these present circumstances. We also need to build better bridges with the government because we need, we need support. The industry as a whole needs support. We need to reach out to all the other associations and bring them all together because it is only when we speak in a unified voice that our voice will be heard. We also need to engage with our principals, with the airlines, who are also going through their own troubles, with IATA, whose, uh, whose, whose involvement with the trade over the years has changed dramatically from being the arbiter who saw that business was conducted in a fair manner. The, the whole system seems to have skewed more and more in favor of the airlines to the detriment of the agents. <coughs> With the result that you have a situation that while airlines are protected against an agent not being able to pay or an agent default, as it is called in the uh, IATA terms, agents have no corresponding similar protection when an airline uh, fails. We've all lost money and not only us, it's also the traveling public. So it is in the interest of everybody, not just agents, but also travelers, that a system be devised to protect against airline failure. So these are some of the issues that we would uh, be taking up. 
And apart from this is, is this very, very critical issue of sustainable, responsible tourism. The goals that were set for the 2030 uh, by the uh, Paris Accord for 2030 was to restrict global warming to 1.5 degrees over ex existing levels. That becomes very, very difficult. It's quite obvious. The goalposts have been moved. But we will not achieve this even in 2050 if all of us do not, do not buckle down and seriously just stop talking about it but actually making it part of our core business philosophy and our core business strategy. We need to be much, much more, as they say, green, not in word, but in deed. So with that, I'll, I'll uh, hand it over to the rest of the team to carry uh, on and answer your questions. Uh, Ajay, what's your take on insurance to safeguard the interest of travel agents and travelers? For a travel agent. Uh, does that mean insurance against uh, airline failures or insurance that tra a travel agent gets for, uh, you know, uh, protecting or giving a security to IATA so that he can have ticketing rights? Hello? Abbas, the, issue, Abbas, the issue is really of uh, protection of the agent and the traveling public against airline failure. Uh, oh. The agent has already given a guarantee. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Okay. So, when you mean, uh, you know, travel insurance, now I, I think this has to be taken at a level, uh, you know, with the government and the government has to have a, a, some sort of a premium attached to the ticket, which would ensure that the traveling public and the travel agent would be protected against an airline's failure to pay back monies which the airline has collected and not being able to deliver what they have to deliver. So this has to be done at that level because uh, at, at, a, at a level which of the travel agent and IATA, we are talking about something like a scheduled airline failure insurance. Now, when you, when you look at that insurance, uh, it is something which is voluntary for a traveler or a travel agent to take based on the ticket issued. But it can't be a compulsion to be made to everybody. It, it is only from a governmental perspective that it will be included in the ticket, like the GST is included in the ticket. And then which would ensure the traveling public that yes, if the airline does not deliver, you will get your money back and this is your insurance premium that you're paying. And in terms of the volume of numbers, I think the premium would be pretty affordable for everybody. And then which would ensure the traveling public that yes, if the airline does not deliver, you will get your money back and this is your insurance premium that you're paying. And in terms of the volume of numbers, I think the premium would be pretty affordable for everybody. Hey, that's right. Who will take this call? Who will take this call? You know, <clears throat> so the end this of today, is... someone have to take this call. Yeah. And I believe I, I, I need to play a Important role in this. Uh, uh, see, IATA, IATA is a body which is of the airline. Okay. IATA is not concerned with this. IATA will say that, okay, I mean, if the government wants to do it, yes, the government co can go ahead and do it. Is, and I think we have taken this initiative. We have started taking this initiative through faith and reaching out to the government, especially the Ministry of Civil Aviation that yes, we need some sort of a tax which can be, which can perform the work of an insurance premium for each and every ticket for protection against the airline failures. And that would be what, what the best thing for the traveling public as well as a travel agent. Of course, the fare would go up a little bit. Yes, we would. We, it definitely would be. But because of the numbers and because of the volumes, it wouldn't be as much as we think it is. 
in 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 in, in my, in my uh, estimation it would be a very very marginal cost you know a few rupees so uh, that but as as abbas rightly said it needs governmental intervention because when when the dgca uh, gives approval to an airline to operate flights into india this could well be one of the conditions that are imposed to ensure that the traveling public is protected against scheduled airline failure your uh, second uh, question uh, sorry the very important thing is that iata does not cover all airlines so when you're looking at the low cost carriers I mean, they are they 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 have nothing to do with IATA, but I mean, they still would fail, and they we would we would still lose money with tickets. I mean, even the whole uh, Supreme Court case that uh, Tafi had filed against uh, 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 you know uh, the airline for refund, we still don't have refunds coming because there is there is no mechanism which is allowing a passenger to go to the Supreme Court and say this airline is in contempt of court. About the second question, there are a lot of issues within the association. How you are going to handle all? How you take it further? See, we uh, Taffy was one of the founding uh, members of uh, Faith, uh, and I was its president then. And the vision was to create a powerful body which would represent the entire industry. All other industries have their uh, have their uh, representative bodies. whether it's the telecom industry whether it's the construction industry whether it's the insurer i mean every segment every industry has a powerful lobby the travel and tourism uh, industry unfortunately has failed to make that transition or to evolve into that apex body which works as a lobby for the trade and we need to strengthen that one of one of the reasons why perhaps our voice has not been heard the way it ought to be given the fact that we contribute approximately 6.7% to the indian gdp employ 1 in 10 people those those figures are known but what is not known is the hard facts behind this industry how many people how many vehicles how many hotel rooms you know the the entire so the economic scale of this industry needs to be documented only when you have hard data will you be able to go to the government and put your case before them and for that i think there is no conflict of interest if our first goal is to compile authentic credible empirical data which has been put together by a reputable uh, agency for example cmie or some uh, such other organization then we will be in a much better position and i don't see any conflict whether it's with hoteliers whether it's with transporters whether it's with tour operators whether it's with travel agents so there is no conflict and this is the way to build those bridges have short term goals which are very achievable and then build upon your success and that's that's how anil we hope to create synergy they want to take it to the next level the role of all members i want everyone to say something what they are planning everyone have done a lot of plans so i want your team to talk about uh, one one point let's uh, let's let's start with the uh, the lady let's start with rani yeah to take uh, the travel business to the next level first of all i feel that uh, there there are far too many associations who are not working together so that's a very important factor that we all have the same uh, intentions and the same goals and we have to strive for the same uh, results so to have that unity amongst uh, all the various associations be it under the umbrella of faith or making an alliance uh, with each other this is very important because this is a, will be our biggest plus point because whether we approach the airlines the governments the hotel industry um it is very important that we have we have one voice instead of multiple voices asking for uh, different uh, uh, issues same issues but put differently so i feel uh, especially this pandemic has taught us that we need to 
certainly work together because we have a whole lot of new issues that have come up which we never ever thought would happen to us and we are at our worst situation right now so things have gotten so bad now you know we it can only hopefully get better so this unity and our uh, purposefulness between all the associations will make a big difference even to the membership because unless we show results to the membership they will have no faith in the association and the idea is to finally have every travel agent be a part of one of these associations so that uh, you know there is that sense of belonging right in continuation to uh, whatever mr president said and uh, ms rani bachani ji said i think we need to create new chapters to induct more members and moreover also create sub committees with like lot of issues like taxation visas or airlines so and, and also to empower them to give them the kind of liberty also to give them that kind of help in any manner what is required we need to give the justification to members value for joining an association we need to give them that value which is very important and that what i believe in the numbers count a lot when we do some kind of lobbying or when we approach a government or when we join hands with other association when we have numbers with us that these are the total number of membership what we have definitely the strength counts and that's how we can take each and every uh, you know problems further together with one voice very right uh, who next okay i'll come i'll come in yeah go ahead and okay see i see that uh, you know these times are very difficult times and uh, the travel business has to be resurrected all over again there is to be a protocol in the covid period for travel uh, the questions uh, to make a seamless travel experiences uh, is a very important one we have to be a part of the process where uh, there can be a seamless travel experience so that more and more people can travel across the world and uh, without going through uh, many difficulties uh, domestically and internationally both so for that delhi is the seat of power and we need to have uh, a lot of interaction with the government civil aviation ministry dgca because the powers that be should understand our point of view it is very necessary for us to forcefully put across to the government what we require uh, for for the customers Uh, for the traveling public and for the travel community also uh, we have been the extended arms of uh, the airlines for many years and uh, i feel that um, the diminishing of the travel agent is not in the interest of either the traveler or the airlines and uh, our position has to be resurrected all over again so we will put in all our efforts to reconnect with the government at the right places and put all these things together so that in the very near future everybody can see results for the betterment of the aviation industry in this country initially i think what the membership is lacking is proper communication between the secretariat and the members so we need to have very good communication with the members and also try to bring more value to the membership so this is how we will be able to expand our membership base we need more lobbying both at the center and at the state level with the tourism industry ministry and try to take the uh, members problems to the concerned uh, authorities that's what is the need of the r in fact it's important yes who taafi members were mostly into outbound and ticketing business outbound is on hold domestic is the only way forward so how you are going to address the situation for your members you are absolutely right that taffy started out as an association of ticketing agents but over the years 
like some of our members have said, they've adopted the motto, we also sell tickets. Because we've realized that ticketing, while it can be a very, very important revenue source, with the uh, erosion and the disappearance of commissions, well, that, that revenue stream dried up considerably. But at the same time, we all discovered that the tourism pie is much, much bigger than merely the ticketing business. So everyone has diversified into other related activities. Some have gone into uh, mice, some have gone into uh, wedding, some have gone into uh, uh, events, some have gone into festivals, and of course there's the outbound, inbound adventure and domestic uh, segments. What you will see is that new segments will emerge with new specialists. Sometime back, cruises did not figure at all in the uh, lexicon of our uh, revenue stream. Cruises are becoming an important part of it. So, as I mean, the travel agents are a very, very innovative and a very resilient lot of people. We've survived all kinds of things. We survived 9-11 when people said, oh, the world has changed forever and travel. Travel did change. This COVID-19 has changed it beyond anything that we have experienced in our lifetimes. None of us were around in 1918 when the so-called Spanish flu, which incidentally did not originate in Spain, uh, just, just hit the whole world. So this, this is something very, very different, very unexpected and very uh, tragic that the world has been subjected to. But we will find other ways around it. It's not only domestic. Domestic tourism cannot sustain the entire tourism industry. Let's be honest about it. So we have to be innovative. We have to think out of the box. We have to find and create new opportunities. And that's how, that's how uh, we will uh, survive. Technology. That's going to give us another huge edge. Because people will specialize into creating experiences that are based on the new technologies. So I'm not worried about the uh, future of the uh, travel trade uh, and its members. The worry is that we need international protocols which will facilitate travel. That's where the government to government connect and a global outreach and a global agreement on what is it that will be required to restart travel in a safe manner. So that's, that's, that's what we would be looking for. The world is opening for vaccinated travellers, but nothing came from Indian government. What's your viewpoint on this? It's a two-edged uh, sword, uh, Anil. You see, while on the one hand, all of us would like travel to start, you cannot have what is called uh, vaccination racism. Now, to, to just elaborate on this for a moment, you cannot have a situation where the AstraZeneca vaccine produced in Europe is perfectly acceptable and considered uh, adequate for people to travel. Whereas the Covishield vaccine, which is the same vaccine produced in India by the Serum Institute of India, is not kosher. Now, this, this kind of... And there are countries that still do not have access to enough vaccinations. So it would, be, it would be a travesty of natural justice if those people were denied. The answer really lies in expanding the vaccination program. You see, until at least 60% or more of the, global vac uh, of the global population is vaccinated, you will have these issues. So the focus has to be on producing more vaccines, delivering them more efficiently to all countries so that more people can... What you said about a valid point, but can't we open it for the domestic travelers? At the end of the day, we all need business. And what you're saying about domestic tourism not being able to open up for vaccinated people. Uh, the thing is, you know, our borders are very, very porous. Uh, our borders are very, very porous. There is no way you are, uh, you know, you are going to be able to establish who's vaccinated and not vaccinated. I mean, 
yeah of course the certificate is there but vac- the vaccination i think the governments are playing it a little cautious after the second wave and they do not want to open everything so much that you know they, they we are looking at a third wave with that i think that will be more destructive to us than anything else uh domestic tourism the way it is opening i uh, at least we think it is it is fine but yeah a, a little bit push on the uh, core areas of you know all over india would be really good but it's not something that it's going to happen overnight the travel agent does realize this and it's not good, you know and yeah he, he, i think he knows that he has to still wait for maybe 3 to 6 months to have a little bit normalcy coming into the travel uh, spectrum at our uh, we as indians are not at all disciplined we do not follow any instructions any uh, protocols now in this pandemic time we can all travel we can have a good time but we need to follow the protocol we need to wear mask we need to uh, avoid overcrowding so this is the reason that uh, tourism is not taking off because the minute any destination is open everybody rushes there and nobody wants to be confined so this cannot uh, happen in this uh, day and age Still, uh, this pandemic is uh, uh, under control. I need your closing remarks. Okay. So, as 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 we've all uh, realized, travel has changed forever. It will require a greater discipline, a greater restraint, and a greater responsibility from each one of us. all the stakeholders as well as the travelers in order to get travel back on its feet we need to be more compassionate in our approach also not only to each other because we've suffered but also in our approach to the earth we have to be more responsible in the way we structure tourism products and at the same time what we need is our membership to come together to address their questions to us which we promise to take up in the best possible way by creating specialized cells to handle different issues to look at how we can augment our revenue streams through the use of technology and how we can bring all the segments of the travel trade together to work for betterment not only of the trade but also of the world because tourism has a higher paradigm tourism is one of those unique industries which brings people together as a prime minister often remarks tourism connects terrorism divides now you can't put it any more simply than that so if tourism connects people let's use that power to create a greater good a better understanding a better harmony among different cultures and let's bring the world together through tourism because tourism while while it's quite obvious to everybody that peace creates tourism it's also equally true that tourism has the power to engender peace by creating better stronger understanding and links between people so it's not only about trade and commerce it's also about leaving the world a better place that you found it that's going to be what uh, we're going to be working on and we count on support of media like yours of the government of our members and of everyone including the traveling public who both form the sea ecosystem perfect thank you all and joining us on this episode of travel world thank you namaskar sat sri akal keep watching travel world you are watching travel world online